Because I can't remember, okay? Yeah, I'm, all right. So we're going to, okay. we took a pause, and now we're going to hit. So, um, okay. we hit the family. I do want to ask about, um, because I know, uh, very proud Irish, did, when does, do you know how deep in the family tree were, like, the Irish immigrants? Or did, did yeah. your grandpa have an Irish accent? Or no, but they, I, I know that that uh, they came from Ireland. Um, I'm not sure that they. You keep going. Okay. Yep. I just need to get that a little more. You know that they were from Ireland. Okay, we know they're from Ireland because my two cousins and their husbands went over to Ireland to look up our ancestry. And uh, my one, now this would be the, the Kylie family. The Kylie family is from Cork, which is at the very southern part of uh, Ireland. And it's a place with, in the, the county Cork, uh, if you've heard of uh, Cobb, that's where the immigrants took, uh, the Irish immigrants took the boat uh, to go to America from this, this uh, port. It's called Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, and that's in County Cork. Now, uh, Tipperary is where, the, uh, now we're talking about the Kiley family again. Tipperary is where uh, I think that uh, Grandma and Grandpa uh, Kiley met and we couldn't figure out because one of them was from the county Cork, and then the other one is from Tipperary. Now, how did these two get together? But it's like uh, northern Kentucky and over the bridge to Cincinnati from where mm -hmm. they lived. They lived in a place that was called Clomel, C-L-O-N-M-E-L. And, uh, and, and one was from Clomel and one was from Tipperary, and that's how we're thinking how these two get together, but all they had to do was go over the bridge, you know, just like we do for, to go to Cincinnati. So we know for sure that the Kylie family is really descended from County Cork. We know that. Yeah. Now, about the McGarrys, uh, I, uh, well, another thing about the Kylie family is that they had relatives in Cincinnati that I think that, uh, they could go to once they got to the USA. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to have somebody over here to be your sponsor, so to speak. You know, so I think the Kylie family had like a family over in Cincinnati. I remember them talking about the, the Kavanaugh's, Kavanaugh's, mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, so, I'm trying to think who else that might have been, but uh, and um, and actually now with the McGarry family, um, don't know. We know for sure that they came from Ireland. You know, I, I, Joyce has got a lot of this genealogy, and because my cousins that went over there uh, gave her all all the things okay. that they wrote. You know, so uh, she has done a lot herself. You know. But, uh, and anyhow, uh, my grandma, McGarry, her family, uh, her, her maiden name was Blair to begin with, and my grandma uh, Kylie's name was Ellen. So we have Ellen uh, and uh, Ellen Kylie, Kylie and uh, Ann and Blair, okay? And uh, Uncle, my grandpa, Kylie died before I was born, so I didn't know him. But my uncle, uh, my grandpa, uh, McGarry, uh, his, uh, his name probably is James or John. We, we just always called him Grandma and Grandpa McGarry. I mean, mm. you know, how <laughs> you do? We never ask him what their names were. Found out that Grandma was Anna, Anna, okay? So, uh, <laughs> any, any, anyhow, okay, now, so, uh, so I was, I, I did look online for good questions to ask. Uh, well, so, oh, um, 
So uh, one was, uh, what were your favorite activities or hobbies as a child? You know what? I remember growing up down on East 16th Street worked at Grandma and Grandpa's house, you know, and I had a playmate across the street by the name of Jeannie Holmes. And I want to tell you one more thing about this place on East 16th Street, Grandma and Grandpa's house. They lived like with, with, uh, within a block of the slaughterhouse. So we would hear the cows mooing and we would get all this smell from, you just can't believe it. You absolutely cannot believe it. And we had a, a, a lady that lived down the street from us and, and she had pigeons. <laughs> it was just one of those neighborhoods where you were you know, just really at home. I, I remember. Of course, I remember uh, being six to get on the streetcar to go to Los mm -hmm. Alette, so we, mm -hmm. I was still growing up then. Uh, we, we just played, uh, I guess, dolls, because that's what the girls did in those days. We played dolls, and then Jeannie Holmes, uh, she was my only playmate that I had, and um, because the people that lived next to uh, us, uh, they had grown sons, and on the people on the other side, we did. I don't even remember who they were, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. and anyhow, it, it was always Jeannie Holmes and me doing something, and we probably just played dolls. You know, dolls. We, we played dolls because that's what that's what girls did in those days, you know. And um, did did uh, did girls play any sports or anything like that, or oh. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. Unthinkable for girls to play sports. Really? Really. That, that's, uh... No, no. I mean, we would, maybe we would throw a ball or something to it as play, but you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah, But to actually play soccer, basketball, baseball, it, it was unheard of. Unheard of. No really? Like, yeah. it's, it's, so it was, it was like a taboo for females to play uh, sports then? I don't know if it was a taboo, but we not, I don't think there was even a thought of, of anybody doing anything like that really? in those days. You know, we're, we're, talking, we're talking way back. Yeah. <laughs> way, yeah. way back, yeah. Well, so, I mean, and you grew up uh, during, I, I mean, the, the Great Depression was the 30s. So, I mean, you were living right through that, did, did you feel any effects of it or? My mom and dad went through it. Okay. My mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, they, both, they all went through the depression, yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and I think they, they never had to get into the bread line or anything like that because my dad always had a um, job with the railroad. Okay. And then my, well my grandpa was dead, okay, my grandpa Kylie was dead, but uh, I think the, the boys probably helped their mom, that would be Grandma Kylie, and somehow I have no idea. They never talked about the Depression ever. Okay, yeah. so that, that's, that's a... That don't, was, don't... It wasn't it, a taboo or anything like yeah. that, it's just that it just never was brought up. But well, I, I, know, uh, I don't think that we ever were hungry or anything like that. Yeah. You know, I was like nine years old when eight years old when 9-11 happened and then my parents you know I know about it hey this happened but it's like you know right. they don't talk about they it. don't talk about it but no. but I'm sure you know my parents are super stressed or whatever and worried about the state of the country and what's of happening course. and but don't don't uh, right. give it to the kids so um, so did the, the, did the depression uh, uh, so it affected your you're the whole everybody, right? I mean, it affected everybody, but but you were able, your 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 father was able to keep a job, so he was able to keep he providing. The railroad, he the railroad, the railroad, railroad was a, that's why, a bit yeah, of a blessing yeah. at that time, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, and probably my dad helped out his in-laws. You know, yeah, his, 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 it, my is, mother's you know, mother and dad. Is that where in the time period when it started being? One pair of shoes a year, or I I, I hear that the 
I heard in history there's a time, maybe that's World War II, that you're only allowed like... Oh, like that was the rationing. Rationing, okay. okay. We can get into that. We, we, let's, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll stick to the 30s right now and then we'll hit the 40s. Okay, uh, well, but okay, well let's, I, I knew I grew up down there until I was at least six years old because that's when Dad mm -hmm. taught me how to ride the, the uh, six, three cars, you know. And uh, at one point, though, we moved to Delmar Street and, uh, and I think Jerry was born. And I, at, when we were still down on uh, uh, with Mom and Dad on Grandma and Grandpa's apartment, I remember that. So I guess they were outgrowing the places where the place where they lived. So they moved to Delmar Street, which is close by the, the Licking River, because we lived at the very end of uh, Delmar Street. And uh, so. And then I had to learn to ride the streetcar all over again, you know, but um, mm. we lived there and we were in the 1937 flood. Don't know about that. What's the 1937 flood? Oh, that's the... That's the biggie, yeah. That's the biggie, okay. But you talked about playing. Uh, when I moved to Delmar Street, then I had playmates because uh, there was an alley in back of our house and a big family lived in, in this alley, uh, on the other side uh -huh. of the alley. And they had like six kids. So, okay. so they were all somebody around my age. And I mean, we could play together in our backyards and stuff like that, you know. And uh, we would play catch ball or things yeah. like that. And, uh, and uh, then across the street from me on, on Delmar Street, I had a friend by the name of, of Betty Middleton. <laughs> and her mom and dad owned a chicken place down on Eastern Avenue. So they always had chicken. <laughs> they always had chicken. And they'd bring them home and run around. And, <laughs> and this is something that, that would hardly be tolerable in, in this day and age. But there was a black family that lived back off of Delmar mm -hmm. Street, in the back part of the street, behind garages and stuff like that, there was a black family that lived there, you know. And oh, we didn't geez. think, mm -hmm. that, I mean, we didn't think anything of it. Oh, I mean, okay. we, I mean, we didn't really play with them or anything like that. But I mean, they were always nice and, and yeah. what they have, whatever they have. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, and didn't know their names or anything like that. I think every now and then, uh, and mom would ask one of the, the, the mother of the black children to help her out with the ironing or something like that, you know, and then she would pay her, you know, to, to do maybe some ironing for her or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that was like really almost unheard of in those days, in those days. So. I, 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 th I thought that was going to go a lot more south than it, it was. Uh, that's, no, it's just, because uh, I, I know that uh, uh, what Martin Luther King is in the 60s, so you still were definitely growing up in a time where segregation was... Not uh, even heard of. Uh, we didn't know what the word, word meant. Yeah. Had, okay. You know, okay. We didn't know what the word meant. So, so it was uh, so that that was the only uh, black family you knew of in the neighborhood. Right. And uh, yeah. And but but was the uh, water fountains and the restaurants where it's that there's always say there's signs of like blacks go oh, here, yeah. whites go here. That wasn't in Northern Kentucky. Well, not in our area, not in the area. I mean, having a black family live in our area was really, really unusual because down on Greenup Street, closer to where I was going to school, is where the black neighborhood was. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. And we really were not allowed, I was not allowed to ever be walking down that street on Greenup Street uh -huh. by myself. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, but, so. But but then I guess one family was able to to move to Delmar and that or that area and then uh, uh, well, get in this 
uh, different it, areas. I, you know, I can't and, exactly remember the house that this family lived in, but it, I mean, it wasn't a shack. You know what I'm yeah. saying, or anything like that. And and they really kept to themselves. You didn't see much of them. I mean, it was the black family I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, I, I guess. Uh, I guess they might want to if, they, if they're going to get some grief from people for the color of their skin. They might just want to keep their, themselves with the, yeah. Profile. A low profile. Yeah. A yeah. low profile. Yeah, right. Well, uh, uh, I guess with, uh, did you ever witness uh, racism at all growing up? Oh, I mean, and. Nothing. Well. We really had no contact with the, um, the outside yeah. of this family. We we had no contact with with uh, anybody but just our friends and uh, the family and mm -hmm. our playmates and stuff like that. You know, and uh, there there was no conflict. There wasn't any conflict at all. So so, well, I guess now I'm jumping forward because since we're talking about it, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, I think he, I'm not sure, I think he would be your age if he were still alive. I think you were close to the same age as Martin Luther King. But see, everybody just minded their own business, you know what I'm saying? They, they, were, they were happy, I guess, yeah. just to make a living, because maybe they're coming out of the depression too, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So if we, we never really questioned anything, you know, we never yeah. really questioned anything at all. So that's more of uh, the Deep South is uh, maybe the Martin Luther King thing. And well, I will say that uh, the, the blacks in, in the, the Covington area were just really uh, just maybe five blocks of, of the black. Just in the Covington area. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, on, five, on five blocks was yeah. uh, the black community. Right, yeah. Yeah. But they were on the same street that the, that where I went to school, you know, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so anyhow, yeah. I was always not, not allowed to walk that by myself, you know, yeah. no matter what, so they were just taking care of me, you know, but, uh, so, um, but we lived on Delmar Street yeah. and, until I was like um, 10 years old, and if, and actually, we were in the 1937 flood, and I remember the day that I came home from school, and my grandpa McGarry was at my, our house, and I kept thinking, what's grandpa doing here, you know what I'm saying? At this time of day, you know, and uh, he said, come here, I want to show you something. He took me down into the basement of this, our house, and he lifted up the cesspool and he says, look there, that's the river. And the river was almost to the top of the cesspool. Oh, really? And he, yeah, he said, that's, that's the river coming up. And he says, I'm here to help move as much as I can to the second floor. To oh, the geez. second floor, okay. yeah. Okay. And um, so the river came up came up and uh, we went up to Grandma Kylie's to live while the river was up flooding mm -hmm. the whole area down mm -hmm. there because we were in walking distance of the Licking River. You know, I mean, uh, it, mm -hmm. it was right there in our backyards, in our backyards, so to speak. And then my Uncle Ed, who lived out in Latonia, and they had a creek in the back of their yard that the river was going into the creek and flooding that area. Mm -hmm. So they moved in with us up at Guillermo Kylie's. We thought it was a really big fun thing. You know, we had all, <laughs> we had the, <laughs> yeah. Uncle Ed just had boys, he had two boys, you know. But, but we thought that was really fun because we got to play with our cousins and we played card games, you know, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but I will tell you this, uh, the water was rationed. They had to, at certain times of the day, you had to fill your bathtub up with water. And that's the water that you used to cook with, to flush your toilet with, to wash with. And, uh, and, uh, and that's how we lived all through the flood. All through the flood. But, but we, we ate, we all ate together and, um, 
and the flood really did not get up to their place. You know, okay. it, it did get up that high. But uh, the, the boys, grandma's boys, were in the flood, let's put it that way. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so I, yeah, That's I can attest to that. And, and yeah. part of where I went to school was all blocked off because the river had been backed up. Really? And stuff like that. So, so we didn't have school for like months. You know, months or so. You know, so, and, but I, I think it was the flood that really pushed my mom and dad out of Del Mar Street. But I will tell you this: uh, that we lived in a house on Del Mar Street, and, and and actually, mom and dad came back from and cleaned up that house. Okay, and well. They couldn't move the stove or refrigerator, so that was just a goner. But anyhow, they moved, they cleaned it up, and they were renting that house. And this is the story that my mother told, her, told us all the time. This house had, I guess, maybe only one bedroom or something like that. And, uh, and we, it was me and Jerry by then. And mother asked the landlord who owned a house farther down Closer to the river than what we were even. If they could, if they, if if they went in, if Mom and Dad went in and cleaned up that house for him, would he rent it to them for the same amount of rent? And he said, Yes, we'll do that. So we moved from one house on Delmar down to the next house, but we were closer to the river then, then too, you know. Oh, okay. But the river came up to within two inches of the second floor. Whoa. Yeah, two inches of the second floor, yeah, and uh, people were in the rowboats trying to get some of the stuff out of the houses and stuff that they could carry and things like that. Yeah, I, yeah. but I, I always remember when Grandpa said to me, you're looking at the river right now, and I'm thinking, and, and my mom and dad sent me up to Grandma and Kylie's then, right then, because yeah. they had all this stuff to move. They had all this stuff to move as much as they possibly could, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah I think there's a, a, a pole in Cincinnati with a log on it in Sawyer Point that's like, this is the, like the log is up in the air, up real high, and it's like, this is where that flood was. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it was, it was pretty monster flood. And uh, see, we were just the backwater of it, you know, I mean, yeah. the Licking River was just, you know, like a tributary yeah. of it, you know. That doesn't, it wasn't even as big as yeah. the Ohio River. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. But, the Ohio, I'm sure is. But see, it, it, it moved, oh yeah, it moved all, it moved it's, to it's, within two inches of, of the second floor. I mean, that's the story we always heard, yeah. Funny, you uh, uh, bring up being a kid and there's like a natural disaster and you're just having fun with it because, uh, yeah. Uh, we, when I was in high school, there was the, there was a bad windstorm and it took power out for like five days and oh. and and uh, me and my friends we just played board games by candlelight and we were ha we were all hanging out and See, we're like school's good. off this is great like and, uh, well, when you're kids you don't think yeah, anything yeah. happens you know uh, yeah. it's mom and dad that's worrying yeah. and I, and I think too somehow well see the water never really got up to Greenham Street where we were. So my dad somehow could get to work. And I said, my dad, so, you know, he was still providing for mm -hmm. the families then, you know, and, uh, and, and we just thought it was party time. You know, we were just kids. I mean, we can, I, I, would be, I would be like, well, nine years old, 10 years old when we moved We're there. We're going to have some fun with this, yeah, you know, so, why not? So anyhow, we were just, we had a good time. We never ever had television, of course, so we did have a radio, you know, and we'd listen yeah. to the news at night time, and, uh, and people were a lot worse off than, than we were, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so you guys, you yeah, guys kind of so, dodged it a little bit. I mean, you got hit with it, but, uh, but made, well, you made know, the most out of it, so. I mean, I, you know, when we came back home, you know, it was, it was cleaned up, but there's always just, I guess, the thought of it, you know, that the river was here. Yeah. The river was here, you know, and I think after, I don't know how many years we spent there, but uh, I think my mom and dad wanted to get back out of that 
You'll never have to go through that again. Mm -hmm. never, mm -hmm. yeah. If you can imagine cleaning up your house after the, the river has been within two inches of, think about it. I mean, two inches up there. Yeah, that's it's. It's, un it's yeah, unreal. It's I mean, I mean, you really, but it, it's a fact. I mean, it, it's a fact. You know, no matter what. So, yeah, live through it. Did the community come together pretty well then and help each other out? And uh, I don't really know. See, I'm, I'm too young to yeah, you're too young. Except that, that I heard this story one time, and I don't know who, who saw it or who told the story, but they said they saw a piano floating down the river. <laughs> <laughs> they saw a piano floating down the river. That's funny. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> so, Somebody's nice piano gone. <laughs> can you imagine? Can, can you imagine? So, so yeah, that's that's one disaster that I lived through. No matter what, that's the first of my childhood disasters. And then, when we moved out to Fort Mitchell in Arcadia, you know, it was just a, a brand new life for us again. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Um, we had good neighbors there then, you know, and um, and we were just kids, you know, we were just kids, that's all. We, we, at night time we'd play, kick, uh, during the daytime we played Monopoly. We had an ongoing game of Monopoly, you know, and, and I still remember that uh, this is uh, like when we're not in school, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually uh, I still remember sitting on the front steps with the board, and we'd play it all day long, play it all day long, you know. And at nighttime, there was a family across the street from us, the Brockman family, they had uh, five boys. And we all get out, we play like, go sheepy go, or kick the can, and, mm -hmm. and when the uh, street lights came on, we had to go home. We all oh, had That was to, the sign, go home, go street home. lights are on, go, go home. home. Yeah, so we all went home, but that that was it was a wonderful place to grow up. It really. It I don't. Was. I don't know. Go sheepy go. You know what that is? That's hide and seek. Hide and seek. Okay. It, go it's hide and go. seek. Hide, yeah. Hide and seek. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and anyhow, so it was just a neighborhood of, of fun. I was ten years old then, you know, okay. and and. Uh, and so we're 1938 now, and you're 10 years old on Arcadia. I know, right, yeah. I know Arcadia very well. Right, yeah, yeah. So what what school are you going to then? I went to Blessed Sacrament. Blessed Started Sacrament. in the fifth grade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And well, yeah. I'm I'm thinking now. I I think Joyce was born. Well, maybe so. Uh, uh, on Delmar, when we were on Delmar, I'm not sure about that. Okay. But, okay. But, she is ten years younger than I am, but so, so we're we're around that time. Yeah, of, right. Uh, and uh, and be, and I say that because my mother used to make me uh, take her out in the evenings and and uh, and a stroller. And one night I I shouldn't even be telling this. One night my mother said to me, you know, take Joyce out in in the stroller, and I said, I don't want to. And she said, well, you're either going to take her out in the store or you're going to do dishes. And I said, I think I'll just do the dishes. And my mother got really mad at me. <laughs> she got really mad at me. <laughs> siblings? It's siblings, you know. <laughs> yeah, she did. I don't That's think she funny. spoke to me for a little day or so, you know, <laughs> but I remember that. <laughs> That, I remember that story. That is funny. When when we moved to uh, Fort, Fort uh, we moved to Lakeside Park, Fort Mitchell, and we went to Blessed Sacrament. We had to walk to school. We had to walk to school, and we did this for about a year, and then at Christmas time, my aunt Sis, who I said lived in Lexington but always visited with, with us, uh, she bought Jerry and I bicycles. So that was the first bicycle that we had, and I'm telling you, we were thrilled to have a bicycle to ride to school, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So I, I saw her grave this morning and put some flowers on there, and uh, and she is my godmother, and she was always really good to me, you know. So, uh, but anyhow, that that was just oh, that was just so nice to have a bicycle. You know? Now, how how many? Kids in the neighborhood had bicycles. Was it 
Are, are you guys one at of least, few? At, at least one bicycle one in every family. At okay, least at that, least yeah. one, okay. And, okay. and the, the family's like, a, a Brockman's had five boys, the Deckers had like five boys and girls, you know, and uh, and we were all have, you know, on that kind of family. I mean, that, that's that's the way to get around, is some, some bicycles. Yeah. That's the only okay. way, yeah, yeah. But, and, but, well, how but, many cars did you have? Did you your family have a car? One car? One car, yeah, yeah. That's, oh. Another thing that when, uh, well, this is when I went to high school, then back to, to La Salette. My dad and I used to ride the streetcar together. We, that's before he had a car, you know, and, okay. and, uh, and, and, and we became very close, really, because, uh, you know, you know where the streetcar used to turn around. Uh, the, the, uh, the Greyhound, right? Right. Where the, the Greyhound, Greyhound is was the last stop on the... Right, and NC Arcadia is the next... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Dan and I would walk up Arcadia, and then we get to uh, to the <laughs> street right before the uh, the streetcar, and then we waiting there, you know. And we take off running, you know, thinking, oh, it's going to get in before we get on it. He has to get to work, and I have to get to school. So we hop on that streetcar, and we'd sit there, <laughs> and we'd sit there. <laughs> I bet you we did that almost every other day, you know, you'd always be running after the streetcar. Right. Yeah. Running after the streetcar. You hear the streetcars yeah. there and gotta run. Right, yeah. when, when did they get rid of the streetcar? Oh, well, I don't, I have no idea. It, it's, it's, oh. it's never been around in my life. It, I mean, so I'm, I'm 30 years old, I don't remember the streetcar one bit, so it's not, I mean, they, they decommissioned that. I think maybe, hmm. Maybe when I was in college, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. yeah so it's, it's, it was there for a long, long time. Yeah, a long, long time. And then, and and how much was it to take a streetcar ride? Well, for for anybody like that was in school, we had like a a, a card that they would punch it, you know. Oh, okay. And, and, okay. You know, so they punched it. I think they were a dollar. The card was okay. a dollar. A dollar for a card, yeah. and that'll get you so many About punches. Five rides, or maybe I don't know how many yeah. at that time. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyhow, yeah. But uh, you know, I was had to make new friends and everything like that. But but uh, most of my friends were just on on Arcadia. You know, most of the yeah. friends you just you stuck around. But those not so much of the school friends, although there were a few. But you really just played with the, your friends and the things that we did were we'd go down to the end of the street it was called the woods and there was a Tarzan tree there that it was made of, of rope and you would take off and you go around the tree and then you land okay mm -hmm. and that that was a big thing for us you know that was Land, the, landing on the, the yeah, making land, the landing land now. But we had the fields in, in in back of us, you know, and we could play in the fields, and uh, and we had lakes back there, and when it got really cold, we would go ice skating back there on the lakes, okay. and uh, and we'd ice skate, and the, they'd make a fire because it was always so cold, and our hands were so cold, and we'd skate until our feet were just almost frozen, and we and we could hardly walk home from through the fields to get back home. But it was, it was so much fun. It was, fun. And, you know, we, we made our own fun. I mean, you know, we just did the simple things and made our own fun. Yeah, I mean, that's totally different than now because uh, yeah. now I mean, you just can turn on a TV and yeah. you just plop on a couch and. Uh, right. Yeah. But then it was a uh, you gotta go outside and and. We were never it, organized. You know, yeah. there was never anything organized. You call. You wouldn't even call. We had a phone. I think we had a phone. That that was something different too to have a phone. Okay. Yeah, okay. we had a phone, and but you'd go and you you go and next door and you call. Oh Rita, oh Rita, you want to come out and play or something like that? Or you go down the street. And we had a my friend Pidgey up the street and and uh, Rita was next door to me and Bo was down the street and and we just all just would get together, you know, and play. We played paper dolls. We played we played paper dolls, you know, and okay. and stuff like that, you know. Or the Monopoly game, or I the, mean, Mon Monopoly is funny because that's just that's a timeless. Monopoly. That's a timeless game. That uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we still 
Yeah, yeah, I think we played that about a couple months ago. If someone else really yeah, said, I love it. I, I love it. it. Brings back the fondest memories. Yeah. Really, so anyhow, it was it was a great neighborhood growing up because we were all safe. We were all safe, and um, you know we didn't know what was going on in the world. To be honest with you. Yeah, we became yeah. very naive because we really did not know what was going on in the yeah. world. You know, so, you know. But I had already made my first communion when I lived uh, down in Covington. But I made my solemn communion in the seventh grade at uh, Blessed Sacrament. So okay. that was a big thing, you know, for me, okay. making solemn communion. So, yes. Hmm. It, and the graduation uh, from heist from, from Blessed Sacrament. That was another big ceremony, so to speak. Okay. From the eighth grade, you know. Eighth grade to high school. Yeah. Which, where did you go to high school? Went to La Salette. La Salette, okay. Yeah. Okay. I went, and, and I, I, this is the story. I went to La Salette because my mother and her sisters went to La Salette. Now, I was the only one in our class that went to La Salette. And, I, and um, my mother just really didn't know what she was doing to me because I had no friends at, at, around mm -hmm. home. The, the, my friends were either going to Dixie Heights High School or okay. else Beachwood High School, either one. Yeah. Either one. Yep. And, uh, and I was going to La Salette. So, you know, I, it, high school was a big downer for me yeah. because I made friends, I don't mean that, you know, but it was not friends that you could do anything with. You'd see them at school and then they'd go home. And, and a lot of them were from Campbell County, so, you know, we never went to Campbell County. You know, we yeah. were, we, when I was in high school, we were forbidden, and I mean forbidden, to go to Newport. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because that was a really bad place at that time. That's a... Uh... Um, a lot of gambling, a lot of mafia stuff. That that is uh, Rachel's family has ties to the mafia. Uh, the, uh, what what it, well not her family, but uh, her aunt married a uh, somebody that was a, a mafia well, dude, and yeah. they they have a very very nice house. And it's um, look around their house like why is this house so nice? And it's like <laughs> oh this is like two generations removed from the mafia like you know the grandpa or the great grandpa was in the mafia and like now the the kid yeah. still has the wealth or it's still the wealth is still in the family but yeah it's uh yeah I yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, yeah so the 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 uh newport stuff that that's a conversation uh if, if you know much about newport rachel's mom is Obsessed with Newport. Obsessed well, with it. So, she lived she, it, you know. Too, she, you she, know. yeah. She, she grew up in Newport, and uh, and uh, yeah. she loves all the history and read reads all like the the history books, books of uh, Newport. Newport yeah, yeah. So, I read one or two of them <clears throat> myself. The, but the, the we, were, we, we were not allowed. Never, take a pause. While never allowed. Me.